Greetings, I'm Mark, and I love coding, and today I'm going to show you how to create a random music file player. I was inspired by a question someone had on the processing forum. She wanted to know how you would go about doing that. And that's what I'm going to do today. But first, I'm going to show you a little something real quick to give you an idea of how certain things work in processing. And what you can see here already on the screen is I have some code written out. And basically, what I'm doing here is in the global area, I am defining, or rather, I am declaring uh, several different types of variables. And down here in setup, I'm actually going to print out the results of these without defining any of them. It's a, so you can get an idea of what happens when you've uh, declared a variable and you haven't defined it. Um, I'm going to just run this real quick. And we're going to get some results. I'm going to pull this up here down on the bottom. Oops. You can see our results. Um, a zero, zero point zero, and then nulls, null, 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 null. And if you can see right here in uh, the print line statement, which generated all this, I'm uh, printing the integer is i, the f is a float, those resolve to uh, zeros. And then the rest of them resolve as null. And so the, those actually can be tested. You can test whether or not uh, you've created, say, an array list by testing or not, is, is it null? Um, uh, with the uh, integer and the float, you can test whether or not it's a zero because that is the default. Um, yeah, something I haven't really talked about in my previous videos, but I wanted to show you real quick. Now let's get down to it. And here I have my default that I like to load. Um, I've already saved it under random music player, so we can just get right into this. And the first thing I want to do is I want to use um, um I'm going to use the minim library. Now, uh, processing comes with a default library of sound. I've used this, and I found that it worked well with Windows 7, although I haven't tried it in a while. But in Windows 10, I had some issues with it. And so I stopped using it and went to this. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to import uh, ddf.minim. And I'm going to .star it. Now, if you don't have minimum in your library already. If you haven't downloaded it up here in Sketch, you can go into Import, Add Library. It brings up your library, and you can see down here uh, minimum. I've already installed it, so we're not going to have to do that, but you can do that. Um, so we've started. Now, the next thing I want to do is um, define it as a uh, class. Minimum, and we're going to say minimum. And it's defined as a class. Next thing, um, Minim has a built-in audio player. Um, and I'm just going to call it Song. And uh, each time we play a song, we are going to define this, what we've created, as th that song. Now, what I like to use in this sketch is uh, to play random audio or random music um, files is I want to create a text file of that music that I want to randomly play. So say you might have a uh, hundred or so or more in your song folder and you only want to play 10 of them or 20 of them or 30 of them randomly and you can do that by creating a list that it reads off of. And so in order to do that, um, we're going to have to create a list. And let's uh, let's kind of create that. Um, I'm going to save this. I'm going to bring up my music folder. Now, my music folder has a whole bunch of songs in it. I'm going to 
check some of these um, and if you're familiar with um, if you're familiar with processing th three in order to um, put music in your sketch you just drag it over and it will default store it within the sketch folder in a file called data and we're gonna go into that right now um, over here you can click on sketch show sketch folder brings it up within it as you can see right here it says data and in data we have a list of the songs that I just dragged over now what I want to do here is I want to create a uh, text file and I want to call it let's right away save it as and um, we want to save it as it's already in our um, random music player folder and in the data folder of that and we're gonna I'm gonna call it list L I S T list and now I want to create the list and so what I'm gonna do is show you how I'm gonna do the first couple um, then after that I'm gonna just kind of skip because it's kind of tedious and so what I'm gonna do here is uh, rename it now in this case I kind of Think the name is really too long and I'm going to delete all that and that space then I'm going to control a copy control C copy control V paste go to the next line and I'm going to do the same with the rest of these rename control a to select all control C to copy it come back over here control V to paste and we're going to do that all the way down. So bear with me. All right, I got my list filled. I'm going to save it. I mean, as you can see, they're all MP3s except for the last one is a wave. And we shouldn't have any issues with that. And so now we've got that. You can see it's in our folder. And we are going to continue writing the code. One of the first things we want to do is um, when you uh, create a text file and you want to load what's in that text file you'll want to load it into a string and that string needs to be an array and you'll get an error if it's not and I'm gonna call it song names and uh, the way uh, uh, processing looks at a text file is each line which would be each name of our song is a uh, element of the array will be an element of our array and so when we load the uh, list into song names it will have uh, I didn't even count them oh, 11 songs it was 11 songs and it's going to um, load each song name into each element of the array starting with the zero element which is the first position of array up to the tenth position which is uh, it will be uh, or up to the eleventh position which is actually uh, element ten okay let's continue with this now what I also want to do is I want to have a, a, a variable that would hold the name of the song that is currently playing and I'm gonna call it now playing and then our next one is uh, well for now there's not gonna be a next one so what we want to do now is um, set up our little a sketch window as you can see here I've explained this before surface dot set location zero zero is the upper left corner of um, my uh, display which is uh, a 4k display 
I like to automatically have it pop up there. That way I don't have to move it out of the way every time I need to uh, look at the code that's below it because its default is right dead center of the screen. And so I'm going to create my uh, display, sketch display window, and the size of it, and I'm going to do 800 uh, comma by uh, 800 wide by 600 high. That's pixels. Now, if you've got a 1080p display, as I've described before, explained before to others, is you might want to change this to half the size um, because I am using a 4K display. Um, and we're going to continue. Now, we're going to further define the uh, uh, minimum. We've already set it up, and it's no different than setting up uh, a class that you might have created, which we haven't done yet in any of my videos, but we will in the future videos. Um, and you have to say this. And the reason behind it is um, got to put an equal in here. Is it's attaching minimum to this sketch. Okay, now we want to load into song names our song list. And we're going to say load uh, strings. We called it list dot t XT and these have to be in quotes and that loads it into our song list it's an array so up here when you define an array under normal circumstances um, you would have to also tell processing how many elements are in that array well because over here we are loading a string into it Automatically, it knows that that string, the uh, the number of elements based on the number of lines in our list text uh, file, and so I want to at this point in time, I want to define the now playing equal to nothing. Just want a space in there, so when it unless you've got something actually loaded already it's going to have nothing on the screen um, and now we're going to continue now we've done this before the draw loop now draw loop I've explained before it, it basically loops through it over and over and over again default is uh, 60 times a second until for some reason you you stop it and that is on you if you don't it just keeps going and so what we're going to do here is uh, each time through the loop you wanted to erase what was on the screen previously because it might update and change things and you do that by saying background and you define a background color now I'm going to use a grayscale um, but as I've stated in previous videos when you're working with colors uh, default for processing 3 is RGB um, that can be changed and the default uh, value for each R G and B is 0 to 255 0 being the lowest and 255 being the highest and in our case we're using a grayscale so we're turning in our grayscale down to black using a zero. Now I'm going to show you again here because I'm going to create some uh, text on the screen. One of them is going to tell us what to do and the other one's going to say what's playing. Now, and I want those letters to be white. And again, using the grayscale, 255. Now, I can say comma 255 comma uh, 255 which is exactly the same 
as just saying this when you're working with grayscale. Okay, now what do I want to display on the screen? I'm going to, um, first I want to create the size of our text. Uh, and so you do that with a function called text size. And again, I used to like to base everything on the width or the height of the uh, sketch display window. And so I'm going to arbitrarily just say uh, divided by 23. Um, and we're going to run this in a moment and see if we like what we see or if we have to make changes. And then I want to call it the text I want to display. Text. And the first thing I want to do is tell you, give some instructions, which would be click in window, click in window to uh, play a random song. Oops song. I've got to be in quotes and uh, text function takes uh, uh, three parameters. One, the first one which we just completed is what you want to say and this could be a variable or like we typed out the exact words we wanted so you put that in quotes and then we want a position. Uh, first is the x uh, axis which is width and I want to just set it in the center divided by two um, and then the height, which is the y-axis, and I want to divide that by, uh, I'm going to say 3. And, you know, let's just run this and take a look at it. I'm going to control S to save, and I'm going to run it. Is it what we want? No, this is not what we want, and there's a reason why. Um, default for text and using... Uh, rectangle and circle and ellipse and a few others for processing is the upper left corner and in order to change that we're going to need to add something here we're going to do it up in setup here and what we want to do is um, we want to do something called text align and text align the default is corner like I was explaining upper left corner well we want it to be the center and in capitals we say center and now if we run it we get it what we like now and I do like the size of the text so I'm not going to change that um, more or less I don't like where it's sitting though here and so I, uh, the height wise on the y axis and so I'm going to change that um, I'm going to change it to, see if I can get it up higher changing it to 8 control save and run it and I like it okay that's our first instruction next thing we want on this window is we want to display um, the song name that is playing and so I want to say text oops and we're going to change this in a minute but I'm going to show this to make a point text I'm going to call it now playing and the colon and then we're going to use something called an escape uh, code, which is this backslash n. And that backslash n means to drop down what's going to happen next, one line. And we're going to add to it the now playing variable, which is, oops, where we're going to store the name of each song that is playing. And now playing... And then we're going to come with that and then put a position, um, which would be, again, width 
divided by 2, comma, H-E-I-G-H-T, height divided by, and I like where we previously put the other one, so I'm going to say 3, and that is that, and let's run it and take a look at it real quick, save it, run it, and you can see, now I'm going to show you what we've done here we can actually change this greatly um, so what I'm gonna do is right here I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use that escape character N, and then I'm gonna do another and that means it's gonna drop down two lines before it does the next thing which guess what it's gonna be it's gonna be this we're gonna just get it out of there and paste it right here control V and I'm just gonna kind of comment this out for now and let me stretch this screen a little bit more so you can see what's going on okay so basically it's gonna start at the position that we asked it to on this top line right up here and let's just run it and see what we get it's gonna work is it not gonna work let's see that looks pretty good. You can't really tell much of a difference. It's actually down one more line, but we're good with it. So you can see how these uh, little escape characters can really help you out. Um, it basically made it so we can just eliminate a whole line of code. All right, now we're going to continue. The next thing we want to do is uh, load the song we're going to play. Now, how are we going to do that? Um, the first thing we want to do before we can load any song is we got to test. We want to test first off if where we defined up here in audio player the song, if we want to test if it's actually if there's something in it and before we can play it. And so if you don't, you get an error. Now we want to say if song is not equal to no and if you recall when we define a uh, many things like here we define the audio player as song its default is null and so we're testing to see if if it's not null anymore which means there's a song in it and if the song is not song dot is playing which is a built-in function oops of uh, minimum and now we're going to tell it what to do so if it's uh, not null and if it's not playing we wanted to load a song. Hello, AD song. And this is a function that's not defined yet. And so we want to define this function. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, most folks, when they create a function, they drop down below uh, draw here. Um, you can see the draw starts here and ends here. Um, and write their function and as I've explained in the past I like to create a new a tab a different tab before I do that I'm going to save this and I'm going to create a tab and we're going to call it load song load song and within it we're going to create our function now our function doesn't return anything as I've explained before if it doesn't return anything if it doesn't return anything, we use void. And we're going to name our load song function and create what happens within these brackets. Now, we're going to start what happens when we load this song. Well, before we do that, we want to test something. We want to see if, um, again, if the song is uh, not equal 
to null and if the song is playing if the song is playing and it's not equal to null dot is let's see you can go down here it's very teeny tiny because of the uh, high definition display if the song is not playing or is playing what we want it to do if it's not null and is playing what we want it to do is we want it to take song and pause it which this is the way minimum stops the song now we can play from this point um, the same song but if you're going to load a new song you don't want this to still be playing so you pause it and load your new song and once the new song is loaded it takes uh, precedence over the previous song and so you can see these conditions song not equal to null it tests that first and then and if the song is uh, playing now if either one of these conditions it turns out false it will not go into here and it will go past it and we're gonna do the next thing the next thing is we want to uh, create we want to randomly pick a file that's gonna play now I'm gonna do that in a while loop now while certain conditions exist what would be those conditions well what I want to do here is I want to make sure in this while loop that when it chooses a random song that is not the same as the last song because it can to ch choose to the same numbers in the row each number that it's going to choose is going to be an index within let me go back here within our song names and so in order to do that we need to create uh, an index variable and I'm gonna make it an integer index variable now how are we going to check whether or not the uh, song is the same as the last one simply by having a previous index we're going to have a previous index in which we store uh, the current index. I'm going to go back over here. And so we want to say as long as index is equal, and you need two equal signs in a row, to uh, prev index keep doing what's within this while loop and what are we going to do in this while loop well we're going to set uh, index oops index equal to I want to say random and then we want to say between zero and we want it to be the length of our uh, song names uh, array so um, in our uh, when we created our uh, list it had 11 names in it I can write 11 but the best thing to do is to say um, so song names dot length song names dot length and it's erring out for a reason because random um, it, it creates float values as you can see here type mismatch float uh, okay and so we want to convert the results into an integer using the uh, integer conversion which you type int and within parentheses you put everything so everything result of everything will be turned into an integer and sent to index plain and simple so while these two are equal it's going to keep choosing 
looking at random index uh, numbers and then once it finds that they're not equal it's going to leave this little loop and what we want to do is once it leaves the loop we want to say prev index equals index so next time around it can test again to the song that it's just loaded and now we want to load the song now we had to cover ourselves on a certain area that what if there's a typo in our list or a song got deleted or something we have to handle this possibility and the only way I really found to do it simply was by using the built-in class uh, in processing called file and in file we want to uh, create a new file and what we want to do is have it assign assign the name of the song that we are going to be trying to load and where it exists and in this case because we're using our default uh, data folder within our sketch we're gonna say uh, data path and then we can uh, say song names and index Let's see, did we get that right? Oh, I spelled another typo. Gosh, they get us every time. Okay, now it puts the uh, path and the name of the, the, the song that it randomly chose into this F variable. And we created it here within our uh, uh, song, uh, load song function. So each time it comes to this point it's going to clear that what it had previous and load the next index that we've cut, selected right here in our random index now what we want to do is test it and of course to test things we're going to use an if function and if f dot is file now this is another function within the file class and we're gonna uh, say is it a file if it is a file what do we want to do well what we want to do here if it is a file we want to uh, load it if you try to load a file that isn't there you're gonna get an error and so we're gonna load it into our song our uh, audio player right load it in a song and you have to use minim which has its own little uh, functions called load file oops dang it load file and then we got to give it the name of the song and we've already set it right here so we're gonna grab it again control copy that Control paste it control V and So it loads the song now we want to um, We want to store the name of that song in our now playing list Or now playing variable rather now playing equals and then I'm going to just paste it what we did previous the same thing because we know it's uh it exists we've loaded it now we're throwing it into the now playing and then the next thing we do is play the song which is also a function within uh oops silly guy 
a function within minim. So now it's playing the song. Um, and more or less, that's it. But we haven't created anything to uh, actually start the song. And so what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to go back. First, save this, control, save. I'm going to go back over here. And under the draw function, or the rather, yeah, the draw function, I'm going to create another function which is built in to processing. Um, and it's mouse function. I like to use mouse release. Mouse released. And if uh, you've clicked and then released it, it's going to do what? It's going to run our uh, function load song. Now save it. Now if everything is correct, we should get it to work. Let's uh, hit play. If it's not correct, we'll get an error. And we're getting it, but it's not doing what we want it to do. So we need to look in to see what the heck I did wrong. Oh, pretty obvious. Right here. We dropped the next line, right? But what we need to do is add plus now playing. And so that should actually run correctly. Now, if you get a line that really gets really long, it's okay with processing if you say, oh, I'm going to just take this and drop it down a line. It sees it as part of this line anyway. And let's save it and run it again. And now we should get our songs, names, running, and never should the same song play twice in a row. Let's see. And it seems to be functioning. That is it. Um, we're going to do a few more of these videos based on this uh, random music player. We're going to enhance this a lot more and build on it. Um, and so if you did like what we did here, you might want to check out the next ones that I'm going to release. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, in the future videos, I will be uh, showing you different ways to load these songs. I will be adding some uh, visual aids. I will be uh, showing you how to load from your music folder. And so I hope that you'll be seeing me again. Thank you for watching. And as I've said previous, uh, try to be happy and always be good to one another. Thank you.